What up, guys? What up? What up? Uh, I just trying to get a few things set up real quick, guys, and uh, we'll get started, man. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about Python stuff. You know, we kind of mix it up. Sometimes we talk AWS, we get requests, things of that nature. Uh, today though, we're gonna be talking about Python. So if you have questions related to Python, guys, leave it in the chat. Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna share with y'all this some code that I kind of put together as well. Um, it's gonna what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna be doing some. Um, pretty much, I packaged it up in a class, but at the end of the day, what it's doing is doing some web scraping to get uh, tracking information. But we get the results back in a nice, clean JSON, uh, just like the way you would a traditional, you know, API. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So we're going to kind of go over that. So, but give me one second. Just trying to get things. Um, trying to get things in order real quick. And then we'll get started, guys. Uh, let's see. Um, Dude, what happened here? Oh, there it goes. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. And again, guys, you know it's Friday, so you know, you know what we do on Friday is tequila night. We're going to be drinking some. We're going to be drinking some tequila. All right, cool. So let's give it a few minutes, guys, before we get started. Again, guys, if, if you have any questions, whatever it is related to Python, Leave it in the chat, even if it's not related to Python, but I know today we're kind of talking about more focusing on Python. So if it, if it is, leave it on the chat. Uh, be more than happy to, um, you know, talk about it. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, what's up? It is tequila, tequila night. So I actually got this new bottle, um, Chaneco Blanco Tequila. So it's my first time trying it. Um, I heard some good things about it. It's supposed to be made well, based on at least what I read, like, you know, the traditional methods of making tequila. So hopefully it tastes good. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to bust, pop it open in a few. I always like to give it, give it the smell, right? See if it, if it had that smell. Um, but you know what? The smell could be deceiving sometimes. There's some that have a strong smell, like the uh, uh, um, agave smell, but the flavor is not there. And then you have others where it doesn't really have the smell, but dude, the flavors are like on point, which is kind of odd when you think about it. You would think if the smell is on point, 
uh, the flavor would be on point, but not necessarily. So let's see. Let's give it give it the smell. It has a different smell. I would say that I'm I'm used to. It's not bad, but it's slightly different. I'm trying to think what is it. It's it's. Can't really pinpoint it, man. Again, it's it's different. I'm just I'm still trying to figure out is it good or bad. It's kind of like in between, but I can't really tell yet. I don't know if it's just the alcohol that maybe over. It's kind of overwhelming. I don't think that's it though. It's something else. But I guess let's give it a taste. Taste is good actually has a nice good taste to it smell i'm not sure man i'm still so so about the smell what's up guys what's up what's up we got slayer in the house crystal in the house what's up man how y'all guys doing doing pretty good again i'm doing good on a friday guys you know it's friday um so what time is it nine it's my when I do my tech stream, so we'll you know, be talking programming, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be talking about Python programming today. Kind of going over some web scraping to get tracking information and stuff. Uh, but then I'll be on later as well. I'm going to be on after the stream. I'm going to be on again. And I'm going to play... Um, I'm probably going to play um, Modern Warfare 2. So I got it installed and everything. Haven't played it yet. So I'm going to play it later on tonight, see how good it, it is. I saw somebody else playing it that I follow on Twitch, uh, Street Taco Eater. Dude, the graphics look pretty clean. I got to say, the graphics look clean. Um, the gameplay seemed fun, you know, based on the different modes that they have. So I'm kind of excited to um, to play it later on. So we'll see. But again, I suck too, man. I <laughs> I'm gonna get my butt kicked. I'm pretty sure, but it it it's fine, right? It is what it is. Um, but yeah, again, it's Friday, Friday night, tequila night. That's what I'm drinking. Some tequila. Gave it a taste. It's actually good. Um, it's I have tasted better, but it's not bad. It's good. It's just the smell, man. Something about the smell that I'm just I don't know. I'm not really liking. But it does taste good, though. I, I gotta say, the taste is there. I'm just not the fan of the smell for some reason. But man, hopefully y'all y'all guys doing good, man. I mean, how y'all um your Friday night going? Y'all chilling? Y'all relaxing? Y'all gonna go out? Are y'all out and about right now? What y'all guys doing? Y'all got any plans this weekend? Love me some tequila. Yeah, man, I'm a tequila guy. Uh, what is your Twitch link? I uh, want to watch there. Yeah, man, for sure. So my, uh, let me put it in the chat. So I need to create a, a hotkey for that. So it will be Twitch TV. I am the real Lou. So that's my, uh, my Twitch channel. So yeah, man, you can watch there as well. So, um, all right, man, let's go ahead and, uh, get started guys. Again, um, the tequila that I'm drinking is, uh, Chinaco Blanco. So I never had this one before. This is my first time tasting this one. Uh, it's, it's I would probably say out of one, uh, one, one out of 10, I'll probably give it a, a six, you know, um, it's not bad The the taste, um, but it, again, it's, I think for the price, it's actually not bad because it's not an expensive tequila. I have tastes, you know, others that are more expensive that are not that good. So, love tequila as well. Nice, man. What's your tequila? Uh, Jose Cuevo here in Brazil. Nice. So, I think some of my favorites is for sure, uh, Suero, which is the one with the bunny. 
that's my go-to tequila man i love that tequila it's it's awesome man that's my go-to i think from a um what would be my top tequila um i gotta see man there, there's a few that i have tasted um that are very um very good but for sure from my from my low end i would say suero it's not expensive it's about 30 bucks um and it's real good like quality it's there everything's on point man it's made the the traditional way like the, the right way to make tequila it has very good flavor smell all of that's on point man i, I love that's again that's my go-to you know if i'm gonna if i don't know what to get i'm gonna get that um but i'm kind of still learning the tequila right i'm kind of that's why I, I'm buying different bottles all the time to kind of see, uh, taste it, right? Kind of give it a taste, see what, um, what's good and what's not good. I mean, and, and again, that's really the only way you're going to really find out what's good and what's not good, right? You know, by tasting it. Uh, some people may say, oh, this is good. It's not good. But again, we all have different taste buds, man. You got to, you know, taste it yourself to see what you like, what you don't like. Um, the ones that are not that expensive, it's, it's not too big of a deal, but there's some like, eh, I don't know if I want to spend 80 bucks, a hundred dollars. Right. I mean, I kind of do like, there's some that, that, um, that are kind of on more pricey, like a hundred bucks, um, that I have heard from a lot of many people that it, this is like real, real good tequila. So I don't mind buying something like that every once in a while. Um, uh, but there's others that it's kind of like. You know, you get mixed reviews, and man, at the same time, like, I don't want to pay 80 bucks either for something that may not be that good, because that's kind of high, um, I think, in a ways. But, uh, yeah, man, again, I'm glad, glad to hear that y'all doing, um, y'all doing pretty good. Uh, I was a bartender uh, at a Mexican restaurant for a couple of years, drink a lot of tequila. Dude, like, Mexican restaurants, that, that's, like, <laughs> it's interesting that you bring that up, um, so whenever I go to restaurants, let's say if I go to a steakhouse or somewhere, they have tequila there, but they have very selective list of tequilas, right? Of course, I'm looking at their list. I like, you know, they, they may only have like four or five different tequila bottles or something, um, which kind of sucks for me because I'm like, dude, that's what I want. I want tequila, but they're just so limited. You go to a Mexican restaurant, dude, uh, I love it because I like the complete opposite. You look at the wall, did you have like literally dozens and maybe even over a hundred types of tequila from all over the place? It's like, dude, that's where you go. Like you want to taste different tequilas and that's probably what I should do, man. Now that I think about it, that's probably what I should do instead of, you know, to kind of get a taste, but without having to buy a full bottle of everything, especially like the higher end stuff. Go to a Mexican restaurant that sells all these different high-end tequilas and just buy a drink, right? Taste it, smell it, and then the ones that, that I like, I could go buy a bottle. Uh, the one that I don't like, of course, then I don't have to waste my money. <laughs> I don't know why, dude. Now that I think about it, I, I should have done that a long time ago. That's what I need to do for, like, the higher-end bottles. Um, go find a Mexican restaurant that has it and... Um, trying to think which mexican restaurant where i live has a lot of tequila bottles i think um um uh, there's one they actually have a lot i think they may i'm trying to think uh of the name what's the name and i know the name they're, they're um I, I it's actually a big mexican restaurant but i think they have a big a long list of different tequilas uh, we had a tequila that sold for 180 damn, 180 a shot Man, that's a lot. Uh, at the restaurant, and I had a guy buy me. Oh, damn! He bought you one. Nice, nice. So, how was it, man? So, I, I mean, that's a lot. 180 a shot. That's I'm gonna assume, dude. That's like saying the bottle was. I don't know how much. How much was the bottle? I mean, how much would a bottle cost uh, retail if it's 180 a shot? Is that supposed to be like a a uh, thousand dollar bottle of tequila, I guess, or something. Um, Cause man, that's that's pretty expensive. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, no, uh, it actually is, man. Now that I, now that I'm thinking about it more, like man, that actually makes sense to to do that. Um, that will save me a lot of money, especially you know if you buy like an expensive bottle. Well, again, when I say expensive, I don't mean like hundreds, but let's say a hundred or hundred and fifty dollar bottle. 
and then you don't even like it. So like, or you don't really think it's that if it's as good as the price, right? Uh, we get it wholesale for about three hundred. So wholesale will be three hundred. What about retail though? Because then that that's pretty good, dude. If you're selling it for a hundred eighty dollars a shot, and you get it for three hundred, like literally two shots pays for the bottle. And any shot after that, which I'm, I'm assuming you still could get a good amount of shots after that, would be a good amount. Oh, damn. That's pretty cool. And the wood case. Interesting. That's very interesting, man. That's very interesting. Alright, guys. So let's... As we drink some tequila and talk tequila, let me go ahead and switch. And I um, actually wanted to share, man. Wanted to share some code with everybody. So I am, I'm going to be making a YouTube video related to this. You know, kind of going more detail of what certain things do. Because that's kind of what I do in the YouTube videos. My, I, I know my videos are a little bit long when I make videos for YouTube. Um, but I try to go detail because I know there's people that are watching that uh, may not know some of these, um, some of the things that I'm doing. So I try to explain as I, you know, shoot the video. But ultimately, what, what I wanted to go over was, um, so I, I'm actually, this some this is a, an actual project that I'm working on. And, and again, that's kind of how, where, why I, how I get some of these ideas. I actually work on... Um, let's see, what are your favorite, uh, silver, Pasado, Anejo? Uh, so for me, I'm a Blanco guy, silver. Um, I do like, um, Respesado and some Anejo, but I would say my, my go-to that I drink is Blanco, which, and I think that's where I kind of get a little bit more picky because, um, Blanco doesn't have as much flavor as... A Resposado or Anejo. Like those two have, in my at least for me, in my opinion, they do have a little bit more flavor, right? Because they're, um, they're in the barrel longer. So they, the, the, um, you know, some, you know, the longer it's in there, like the Anejo, it's a lot of the time you can kind of, kind of have those, the wood oak little flavors as well, you know, to kind of change up the, the taste. Um, which I think you could, you know, it's why some there's some tequila that you could find that's reposado and ejo, um, you know, they, that are more flavorful. So if you like the flavors, you know, it kind of I think, you know, um, makes you could you could find a, or you could find some more options. I think, but I like blanco, man. I don't know something about blanco. I just I like it. I like to sip on it. Um, I know like with anejo. You know, a lot of it, a lot of the times, that's stronger too. You know, um, pretty sure there's an echo that's like 40%, you know, but there's some that I've seen that like 50 plus or even 60% or an echo, you know, just because I guess because it gets, you know, fermented longer and, you know, and all of that, I guess, or the way they make it is my guess. But um, I'm a Blanco guy, but I do like the other ones. I do like the other ones for sure. But they are more expensive. I will say that too. The Reposado and, and and Anejo, that's where you see the price go up, right? Like kind of like the one that I buy, um, Suero, which is the uh, the Green Bunny. You know, they have the Reposado and Anejo, and you can see the price go up, right? The one that I buy, like thirty bucks, which is an awesome price. And then the other ones go. I think like the Anejo is like fifty five, maybe sixty bucks or so. Uh, no, you know what? My bad. That's not. That's not true. I'm lying. The anejo is actually for for that brand. I think the anejo is like a hundred and ten dollars. I believe, man. Um, and the resposado. Yeah. So like the resposado, I think that's like a good in between, right? Especially from a price too. You know, from a price point. You know, like blanco, you're gonna find it on the cheaper end. Uh, uh, anejo, it's 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 more on the expensive end. Because some of the bottles that I buy when I look at the Anejo, man, the price sometimes even like double than like the Blanco price or even more. So, of course, that's on the high end. And then, of course, the Reposado kind of in the middle. So, you get some of those flavors, but maybe not as strong as the Anejo. Um, and then, 
you know, price point is not as bad either because it's not like crazy expensive like the Anejo is. Uh, the price goes up because the evaporation that occurs in the aging prices pr process. Gotcha. I'm, I'm assuming it's and also because of the aging too, right? Because like the Anejo, I know like Blanco, um, some of the ones that I buy, I kind of read up on it. You know, they may have it, um, I guess, in storage or fermenting for like, I don't know, you know, 12 months, 18 months even six months anywhere between six to like 18 months within that range but like once you get into retrasado and anejo the aging becomes longer right it's not six months anymore or or 18 months it becomes i don't know what is it like two five years or whatever 10 years even i guess you know just the aging process is it's kind of like um whiskey or bourbon Right, like you got some bourbons, especially the ones that are like barreled for like 20 years or whatever. You know, the price is you know, it just goes through the roof because once you make a batch, you can't sell it yet, you need to store it and keep it there for X amount of years and, and then ready to get it out. With um, Blanco, it's a lot quicker, right? You could kind of get it out in six to 12 months, you know, normally within that range. So it's kind of like in and out. A year. Uh, Anejo has to be aged for over a year. Gotcha. Solid between. Okay, so it's the same thing. Six months. So, uh, okay. No, that's interesting. I know some of the Blanco that I have bought in, I've seen, like, uh, when I kind of read about it, it was like six months. And I don't know if all the Blancos are like this, but at least some of the ones. Because, again, I try to... Not, I try to I try to buy the ones that at least I could tell by doing some research are more made the 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 um, the traditional way, right? Like your um, uh, Patron, for example, 1800, a lot of these, these are more like mass produced. So they're not made the traditional way, you know, for, for these guys. They're kind of... Um, um, they, they use, like, pressure cookers a lot of the time to speed up the process of cooking. They add additives for flavors. Because, again, they got to push it out quick. So, a lot of, you know, those are made a lot quicker. At least the one that I have seen, in a way, when, when I read, it's like a 6, 12 months process. It seems to be the around that time. It just depends. Like, there's one that I bought that was, like, tripled, distilled, or tripled. Uh, yeah, distilled and... Um, it was like a more premium tequila and that one i think it was you know it was barreled up for like 12 months but then there was other one that i have bought that's like six months so I, it just depends i guess on which one you're um uh who you're buying it from uh silver can be up to a year but it's aged in a still uh tank mostly um which is why different color yep so I have I have bought some some blancos that are not in a still. You're right. They're either they're in a stainless steel um, like barrel, I guess, or container. And um, a lot of the ones that I've seen that are for sure the premium blancos, there there seem to be like twelve months. I have bought some though. I'm trying to think which one is it. Is it Melargo? Maybe I think it's the Melargo tequila. I want to say they store their, their Blanco in a French oak barrel, even Blanco, and they store it in there for, I want to say 12 months, I believe, if I if I remember correctly. Um, but when you look at the tequila, it's still kind of clear. Um, but there's another one, man, I'm trying to think of the name. Now, it wasn't Melargo, it was another one. It's, it's considered Blanco, but it has a very, very, like, uh, slight um, yellowish tone to like real light but again it's still considered blanco because it's mainly clear but you got the very small light of yellowish like tone to it and uh, I'm go I'm assuming that's because of the um, the um, the oak the, um, the the oak barrel you know because they must have got some of those the, the, the color tones right from the oak barrel um, but I think I want to say if, if, if it, if it is Melargo, I think that's the one that I'm, the one that I recall 
they use French oak barrels, but they do triple like the still filtering process on it or something. And maybe that's why it's not um, like colored. It's still kind of has, it has a clear look to it. Um, but you're right. I think the majority of them don't do that. The majority of them is stainless steel containers. There's only a few, at least the one that I have tasted, very few that um, store it in like oak um, oak barrels. So is tequila like, like your go-to to drink or are you a whiskey guy, bourbon guy, um, a beer guy? Do you drink beer? Like I, I, don't, I don't really drink beer per se. Uh, I may have a drink of here and there, but for me, my, my go-to drink is uh, whiskey. My bad, not whiskey. Tequila first and then whiskey slash bourbon. And then maybe I may have a beer last if, you know. There's eat neither is around. Um, one of the ones, man, what is the name? Um, you, and you may have seen it because you worked in a restaurant. It's it's the bottle that is shape of um like a horse, so it's kind of like a pretty big bottle, but it's shape, it has the shape of a horse. And um, I saw it at the store because it's it, at least over here where I live, it's kind of hard to find some of the, like, the good, you know, more higher end tequilas. But there's one store that I found and that store is actually owned by like a Hispanic family. So, of course, they have a lot of high end tequila there. Um, so, but it's, uh, man, I, I can't remember the name. It's, it's a shape of a horse. And that's not cheap, though. It's like 120 bucks maybe or so. That's the one I have heard a lot of good things about. Um, I'm going to buy one of these days, but it's not cheap either, man. It's, and that's, that's for Blanco. I believe, I believe the Blanco is $118. I have no idea how much the Represado or Anejo costs. I love tequila. I don't keep it around because it goes so fast, <laughs> but I like whiskey, beer, tequila, vodka. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the same way, man. Um, for me, it's for sure tequila first. Um, and I like whiskey too, man. so I, I like having a good whiskey as well. Um, and then of course, after that, it's, you know, it's a beer, but I'm not a big beer drinker. I mean, some of my, some people that I know, some of my friends, they're more beer drinkers. So they're like all into the different, kind of like the way I'm, I'm kind of more into the tequilas, you know, they're, they're just, they're the same way in the beer, like all these different beers and these beers are made locally this and that or like yeah no nah, i'm not i'm not into it like that i don't like beer like that like tequila there's something about it like actually like the taste you know um yes there it goes okay head horse yeah have you ever had that one the head horse bottle like i'm just kind of curious if you have ever tasted it what are your thoughts like, is it good? I know it's not cheap. It, it's an expensive bottle. I mean, it's a, I mean, not, I guess it's not a $300 bottle expensive, but you know, it's like a hundred bucks or so. At least I think where I saw it, I believe it was like, a, I want to say if I remember it was $118 for Blanco in a ways. I don't know if that's, um, it may be normal price. I, I'm not sure, but Hey, what's up? What's up? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You, you're, you're pretty much here right on time, man. We're just kind of uh, talking. Um, you know, of course, Friday, tequila night. So we're talking about tequila. I'm sipping on my tequila. And um, yeah, man, we're about to kind of uh, go over some some Python code that I put together related, related to um, scraping, tracking information from USPS. So... I'm going to kind of go over that and kind of share with with y'all what I did. And uh, I'm going to be making a video related to this as well on YouTube. So if anybody needs it or wants to use it, they could use it. Um, yeah, it's really good. I had it a few times. Okay, cool, man. I need a taste. I need to 
try it out. But I think what I am going to do, man, what I mentioned to you earlier, like I'm going to find a Mexican restaurant that has all high-end tequilas and go and taste it. Like literally go, probably not taste too much because I don't want to be drunk, but, you know, go maybe taste three or four, I don't know, two or three or something, and then go a few more times and taste it. And like that, that would be a cheaper way instead of having to buy these bottles. And then I could get a taste of which ones I actually like and which ones I don't like. That actually makes sense. So, yeah, man. So let's kind of go over uh, this code that I have. Um, so I guess let me explain to you on what what I'm doing here and why I even did this, right? So normally, if you're gonna, you know, like it's recommended by all means. If you're gonna be uh, needing tracking information, let's say from USPS or UPS or FedEx. Uh, you want to go through the API pass if possible, right? You know, go to the API pass. That is the more recommended way anyways. But there may be times where like, hey, can't, you know, it's not feasible because we don't have an account or whatever it is. But you want to automate some um, some tracking um, extraction, right? You want to be able to, to, to get the tracking information based on a tracking number, just like the way you would a traditional API. So that's kind of what I did here. I created, just kind of review with you. I'm using Beautiful Soup. I'm using the request package, date time, then of course JSON. These are some two tracking numbers just for, from a sampling standpoint. And then we have um, this class that I created, USPS tracking URL. Then of course have my init. So of course, when, when we do call this, it's gonna initiate the session. And then of course I have this header uh, where I'm updating the header. And I'll explain to you in a minute on what I'm doing there with the header piece. Um, but as we go down, I, ha I have a property for base URL. So this is actually the URL that we're gonna be calling to be able to get USPS tracking. Um, so like, for example, let me just go ahead and click on it real quick. Let's let's open it up in the browser to kind of show you. So if I were to put in one of these tracking numbers, I'm going to put in the first one. Oops. So if we take a look at it. See how we have our status information on uh, to make sure my face is not in the way. Yep, there it goes. So we have the status information over here, right? Of uh, using headers, we usually simulate browser environments, I guess. Yeah. So for for the USPS, it 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 requires um, the user agent. Now we don't really need nothing else in the header besides the user agent, but if I were to run this without applying a user agent in my header, um, it won't take it. It, it, it fails. Uh, and again, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, websites out there that uh, require some sort of user agent as well. Not all, but there's a lot that do. And a lot of it just because they want to know, all right, this is a legit, uh, like when you're dealing with, for example, uh, APIs, a lot of the time with APIs, the, use, the headers, you're, you're not providing user agent. You're maybe providing the content type and, you know, other stuff like that. But when you're dealing with websites, because that's kind of what we're doing here, just a norm, just a, um, not an API, but just a normal website where we're going to, we're receiving, you know, HTML data back. It wants a user agent, I guess, for the purpose of confirming that it's, come in like you know kind of like the way the browser right kind of the impression just like a browser would be um returning that information uh it make requests feel like it's come eh, exactly right that's coming from the browser so that's kind of why we had to provide something so that's kind of what i provided there and ultimately we have our different statuses here and uh, one of the things that i did if i look at the inspect elements we'll see where we have this div uh, let me try to make it bigger if I can. There it goes. Yep. A little bit easier to see, I think. Uh, make it bigger one more time. All right, that should be good. So see how we have this tracking progress bar status container. 
So this is one div. Then inside this div, we have many steps. Now, the good thing, I mean, they I think it's good the way they built it anyways, is they added this class to know what is a current status. So they call it current step. Because we do have other statuses before this, right? If I look at the one before, this is the previous status, which arrived at USPS region. Then, of course, if I go before that, there's the previous status. But in my case, I want to get the current status at the moment. So really, knowing these two you know, patterns, which is tracking progress bar status container and, and then also um, current status, then I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be able to access all of these elements in between here, which these four elements are the main ones that I want, which is date, uh, location, uh, status detail, and status, right? So these are the four that I actually want. So if we kind of look at the code that I put together. Um, I have this get function, which takes in a tracking number. And then ultimately I'm, I'm creating my URL. So again, if I go back to the browser, if you look at the URL, um, there's this other stuff here, like full page, but this is not needed. So if I were to remove all of this, just keep label and I don't need this either. I could hit enter. So this is this URL providing this argument here, which is the tracking number will give me the, the information that I need the, you know, my status information. Um, what up? What up? Break your boy. What up, man? What up? What up? How you doing, man? Just here, uh, man going over, you know, programming stuff on how to get, you know, tracking information from, um, USPS. Uh, website, you know, can I, how to extract all that data in a nice clean uh, format. So, um, yeah, man, that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm doing good, dude. I'm doing good. It is Friday, which is tequila night. So, of course, I got my tequila, sipping on my tequila for now. You know, I, I, know I do a live stream every Friday at 9 p.m., which is what I'm doing now, like tech-related. So that's kind of what we're talking about today, programming stuff, Python programming. And th today's topic is uh, web scraping on getting the tracking information. And then, uh, yeah, man, once I'm done with this live stream, I'm going to, you know, pretty much stop the stream. I'm going to start another stream when I'm going to be doing some uh, gaming later on tonight. So I got the Modern Warfare 2 installed uh, beta version. So man, that's the plan tonight when I go live. I'm gonna be streaming um, that game and you know kind of get my butt kicked because that's what I've been doing lately getting my butt kicked in that game But still, you know, it seems very fun, man. So I'm kind of excited to uh, to play that game tonight. See um, See how bad I'll get my butt kicked I guess <laughs> But I've seen other people playing it um Dude, it, it looks fun in ways, man. It looks fun. So I'll be able to give my input on that in a few, if that's the case. So if we look at this, um, this full URL, it's pretty much taking the base URL, which again, it's this, is this um, property up here, base URL, which is this guy. And then I'm just, you know, concatenating the, um, the parameter, which is labels equals tracking number, right? That's coming from here. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And then I don't need this, but I ultimately I printed the full URL. Um, having fun is important. Dude, it is, man. It is. You got to have, I always have fun in all of my live streams, man. Even on this one where we're talking tech, I don't know, maybe because I'm just, that's the, uh, the nerdy side of me, I guess, or whatever. But I, I enjoy the kind of stuff, the tech stuff, programming, all of that. Um, so it's it, that's this is fun for sure. Then, um, and gaming, man, for sure, man. So, you you have any plans on playing uh, Modern Warfare Two, or um, are you gonna wait till later on, like once the the actual version, the the live version comes out to play? Or do you, or do you even play, um, um, uh, card any, 
I'm not sure if, if you even if you played COD or not. So let's see. So inside my Git, I got my full URL. And then what I'm doing here is I'm setting my header by um What am I doing here? Yes, right. Uh, dude, I don't need to do this. I don't know why I have this here. This is not needed. I don't need to set my header again. It's already been set. So this is not needed. Yeah, I'm not sure why I had that there. But either way, uh, I have my uh, self client here, which again, it's pretty much my request. Um, called, I'm pretty much doing a git uh, calling the git function, which I, where I'm passing in my full URL, which again is the USPS URL with the parameters of label, the equal tracking number. Um, I mean, I still have the old version, uh, but I have in, in a in a while. Gotcha. It seems dude. It seems fun in a way. I was watching um, um Street play it earlier, and uh, the graphics you could tell they they look. Uh, the graphic looks they look clean the gameplay look clean uh, he had some good things to say about it anyways so it, it seems fun so I'm kind of excited man to kind of play that later on tonight see see how it plays but regardless man I think I'm still gonna get my butt kicked because I haven't been able to kick butt in that game yet now, at, least, at least at least with Halo I feel like I could I kind of I have my good good matches and my bad matches but with COD yeah, man, I don't, it, I just, I just suck, man. I'm just bad. <laughs> um, so the one thing I did, I did realize when I did my testing is the allow redirects needs to be set to false. Um, uh, I think by the, by default, it may be true, I believe, I think, and that actually caused some issues. So I need to set this to false to be able to allow redirects. And then ultimately when I get back, my response is the actual HTML, right? It's all of this, all of this that I, that I, that I see here, what I get back in my response. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting, I'm pretty much getting the text out of my response, which is again, all of this that we see here is pretty much what I'm getting back. And then I am calling this tracking HTML parser function that I created this guy here. So I'm passing in the HTML text through this function, which you can see my data here. And this is where I use beautiful soup and beautiful soup. Again, it's ideal for doing web scraping type task. That's where I pass it in, you know, HTML parser, and that will give me back my page data set. And then from here where this is where I do my first, um, find where I'm looking for the div with the current step, right? Cause remember we saw that earlier. If I scroll down, I have my div with current step right here. So pretty much that, uh, where is it at? This tracking status data set, it's pretty much gonna give me back this chunk of HTML back. It's really what, it, what it's doing. Um, so one thing I did, you know, after kind of my bad, not, is that it, man? Am I looking at the wrong one? No, it is this one current step. Yep. That's it. So now that I have that, what I ended up doing was, um, I ended up. I ended up doing a for loop, but I'm trying to think, why did I do a for loop here? Um, and I don't, uh, I think I did this for testing purposes, but I don't, don't need it. I'm not using it anywhere, but I did a for loop, but either way, as I'm accessing the data, I did another find all, and this is where I'm looking for the, the P tag, which is again, the paragraph, which is this guy here. And then I'm specifying what do I want. So in this case, I want the 
TB status, TB status details, TB location, and TB date, right? Which is all of these guys right here. Status, detail, location, and date, pretty much. Um, and then what I had to do on the date piece down here in the date is because it is string and it actually, I, I actually got like so, so the, the date is actually very messy. If we take a look at the date. This one actually does not look messy, man, but I had some that were actually kind of messy where like the time was on a new line, for example, stuff like that. It just wasn't coming consistent. So that's kind of where I did some, uh, what did I do here? I ended up doing a, um, a split on it based on comma. So if we take a look at we take a look at it. See how we have a comma here, but we also have a comma here. So what I ended up doing was doing a split. So ultimately it gave me back three values, right? It will be value one, which is the months and date. Value two is the year. Then value three is the hour, minute, you know, um, value. And then. I end up specifying the format because again we have the not we have the, the 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 name, and that's where this B comes in. The B is from a from a date format. B represents the full month's name. Then we have date. Then we have year. Um, and what else do I have? Then I have hour, minute, and so on. Um. And then that's where I convert my my date to an actual date object, which is this guy. And then I converted it back to a string. I probably could have cleaned it up here, but that's fine. I ended up convert. I actually did this after the fact, but I ended up converting it to a string. So one thing I did notice was for location, we had these these special characters here. So I end up having to remove it. And, and when you look at the location. It only did it on certain location values. And I think it was related to like special, like spacing characters. So that's kind of what I did to kind of remove that. Um, uh, but as you can see, it gives it back a data dictionary as what we get back. And then if I look at my, my get function as I get my data set back, which would be again, a Python dictionary, then I convert it to a JSON, right? JSON dump data indent by four to kind of format it, make it look nice. Then that's where I get my data JSON in return. So for example, if we wanted to run this, which would be call the class, call the function, which is git. And then I'm going to pass in my tracking information Then I'm going to get a response bag. I could print it out. So let's go ahead and um, give this bad boy a test. So this would be Python, git, let me run it, and boom, as you can see, this is a URL. So if I click on it, it'll take me to the, the, the page. But then it gives it back in a nice JSON format, just like the way we're dealing with the API, right? It will give us back um, status, which is processing at destination, uh, status details, departed USPS region destination facility, Location, four words, and then of course the date. I should probably say date time, but still the date, which is October 23rd, 1227. Um, I guess noon, right? 27. So, again, this is I, ideally though, at the end of the day, man, when you're dealing with pulling data like that, you know, you want to pull from an API that's ideally where you want to get your data from but you know some cases um maybe you don't have an account to usps uh maybe you're doing work for a client you know the client doesn't have that information doesn't know that information doesn't maybe they don't want to give you that whatever it is right i mean there's different reasons why but you need to run some processes to pull data you know, tracking information, but well, this is one where this is pretty much this code will do that. And it's all packed in, in a nice, clean class, you know, um, file. So you could easily import this into your projects. And then this is really all you had to do, man. Call the class, the function, pass in tracking. That's it. You're going to get back a nice, clean JSON data set and return, you know, for that. Um, 
So this this would help for that. Now, one, there's a few things to keep in mind though with this approach. If you're going to be, if you're trying to get tracking information for, I don't know, let's say, you know, tens of thousands of tracking like orders per day, then be aware though, by you running this process, you try to process all of those trackings, you're, there's a real, real, real good chance that your IP address is going to get um, blacklisted from the from USPS. If they're monitoring things properly, that's what should happen. I don't know if U, UPS, uh, U, my bad, not UPS, USPS, which is, again, not uh, efficient in what they do anyways. I wouldn't be surprised that if they don't have no procedures in place to identify it and blacklist your IP address. But nevertheless, just kind of keep that in mind. If you're doing a few, um, a few get requests, when I say a few, maybe a couple hundred a day or something like that, I think you will probably be fine. I think the concerning will be if you're doing thousands to hundreds or thousands of requests a day, that's where you could trigger, you know, um, their, uh, you know, red, that's where it'll be a red flag in their side. Where it'd be like, hey, man, this person, we're getting like literally hundreds of requests per minute for tracking information. That's where they're going to know, nope, there has to be a script, a bot, something happening, right? Running to um, to get tracking information. They must have some kind of web scraping process running. And then most likely what probably would happen, they would block your IP address from accessing um their their website or or something so again i don't think it's concerning if you're dealing with a small volume but if you're dealing with large amounts of volume then you need to go down the api api pass regardless and even with some apis you do got limitations i know like with is it amazon they got limitations on their api um who else um shopify i believe maybe as well there's different systems. They add limitations where when you make API calls, you can only do like, I don't know, X amount per minute, maybe like 60 a minute or whatever it is, right? It's, it's a X amount, whatever it is per minute, maybe it's a hundred per minute or something. But if you exceed that, you know, those call, um, limits, then you have to wait. Like, you know, they put they, they put logic where they're like, all right, you already called this API a hundred times. Boom, we're gonna stop it for now, right? For now, until the minute is up. And then when the new minute starts, then you could call it again, right? That's kind of how they minimize, you know, it's kind of like with data, right? When they do a cell phone, like, oh, you, 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 you already reached your data limit. So now, you know, we're gonna restrict your, um, your speed. Uh, you still have access, but you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna get restricted pretty much. Um, but in, again, in general, like for, so for me, the reason why I built this process is cause I was working on a project where I needed to get tracking information. We had some issues on trying to get, uh, API connectivity. Um, because I, they, who do they use? Um, uh, stamps.com maybe I believe that's that's what they're actually using to ship USPS and we just had some issues I know they have an API and I know it should be a lot easier but we did have some urgency to get this you know uh, tracking information so for now until we get the API set up which probably will come later um, I end up building this and ultimately now I could use this I could import in this class in my project that I have, I have this other source code that that's kind of where I build a lot of my, um, configurations related to other integrations like Shopify integration. Um, what is it? Um, it's a WMS system integration, QuickBooks integration. Um, there's a few other ones. I'm trying to think what, what's the other ones, but it's a, it's a handful of different, uh, connections that I have kind of built within like this is my own code that I built and um, either way I'm going to end up incorporating this into that as well but I wanted to build something right and I'm, I'm very I think this kind of comes over time when you start getting more mature in your coding you start coding more instead of building procedural type code 
um, where you're like one long code, you know, you start thinking more in the sets of functions and classes and, you know, keeping your code, um, you know, the, the, the structure of your code, right? And that's kind of why I decided to go down the path of, you know, creating this class that has functions. Then ultimately, I would just call it the way I did down here, right? Class, function, provide tracking, and then I'll get my, my results, which would be a JSON data set in return that would look just like this. So, um, and again, this I think would work in many cases, man. Um, even if you're dealing with a few hundred, you know, tracking status updates um, per day, I think you will be fine. I think the concern is when you're dealing with tens of thousands of requests per day, that's where, you know, if you would have had, again, if you have like a, a list of 10,000 trackings, you want to get status updates for, and you want to get them all at once. That's where you're going to have issues because you run the script to go and iterate over that list and go call this, you know, URL to get that. There's a real good chance that they're going to probably block your IP address. You know, I say that, but, uh, man, you know how, again, USPS, dude, they're, they're not efficient. So I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even have rules in place to, um, to accommodate for that. So... Um, let's see. But yeah, man, again, I, I, I am going to be making a video over this on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested and I'm going to, um, deploy this class that I have this Python file, pretty much the get USPS tracking to my, uh, GitHub account. So you could always go there at my GitHub account, which is I am Lou hyphen coding. I think that's the that's my name of my um, GitHub account. Let's go ahead and check it out real quick. GitHub. Uh, yep, I am new hyphen coding. So you could go there. You could find under my profile. You could go ahead and find all the different repos that I have related to you know the YouTube v projects that I have I have worked on. Um, I do have a few video that, that will be coming out pretty real soon on, on, uh, my YouTube channel related to coding. So I want to be releasing a video in this over this weekend over this, that what we just talked about, you know, uh, get USPS tracking by web scraping and I packaged it up in like this class. And I'm going to make another video related to um, creating external tables in uh, Redshift, AWS Redshift, that are linked to S3 um, bucket files, pretty much. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through that extra that process, make a video related to that. I do have another video I'm going to make over because I got a request from somebody on, hey, I have data frames, two data frame sets, and I want to be able to, um, you know, export out the data frame data sets to one Excel file. So uh, I think, Dan, do I have that open? Maybe I do. I can show you real quick if I have it open. Yep, I do have it open. So let me show you real quick. I'm, I'll make a video over related to this as well. But ultimately what I did here was, um, So I created two data sets, uh, data frames, pretty much. These are two, two, well, these, these are two data sets that ultimately I convert the data sets, which is a dictionary to a data frame, data frame one, data frame two. And the request that I got from a viewer was, Hey, I want to be able to write both data frames to one Excel file, right? One for one sheet or sheet one, sheet two, for example. So that's kind of what I did in this very simple, nothing complicated, but I'm using pandas. You know, I created again, two data frames. And then of course I use the Excel writer. And then what we do, we just like the way you would normally do to export out one data, data frame. There's a function called to Excel. And then you specify the, the writer, which is this object here. And then the sheet name. 
And then ignore this for now. This is to like adjust the columns on width. But then we get to data frame two. We same thing to Excel function, but we're calling the same writer, which again, it's the same Excel file, but we're specifying a different sheet now. So ultimately this, this is what allows us to write both data frames into one object. And then once we finish doing all of that, then we're going to call the save function on that object to save it, which again is going to save it to whatever pass we have here. I didn't provide a pass. So this is going to save locally on the same folder where I'm, where I'm running my code. But if you have a specific pass, you got to provide the full pass. Then of course just save, close. That's it, man. Like, so it's actually not, not too challenging to do, but again, it was a request. One of my viewers had issues with this. They were kind of stuck on, Hey man, how can I write two data frames to one Excel file? Nothing too complicated, but nevertheless, it was a request from a user when they, they were stuck. So i am be making a video related to this, um, over the weekend. So I, I'm actually, I actually got a few, man. I think I have like four or five videos that I'm going to be releasing over the weekend. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing too on my channel is I'm going to be making content related to some hardware stuff that I talk about. Like, um, I made a video, it was a short video too, like literally a minute, 30 seconds related to, um, um, the, it's a pretty much a battery pack, um, a portable battery pack for like charging devices, but it's. It has a different, it has a pretty cool design because it's clear. You can see all the components inside, which is number one. So, but besides that, um, it's supposed to charge as well, um, laptops and things of that nature. So, which I think is very, very cool. Um, because I have other battery packs. They do not charge like laptops. You know, this one does. And the, the reason why I bought this one was it could be used on airplanes. You know, it, it's barely at the limit where you could take it on an airplane and where it's allowed. If it was any any more capacity, it would not have been allowed. But that one, it's right at the limit, so it's travel friendly. Um, but either way, I'm going to be testing it out because it, it's a little bit on the higher end, I think, of when it comes to cost. Um, but I'm going to be testing it out. But I'm going to be doing. I guess the point I was trying to make is I am going to be doing more videos. Uh, some videos, not 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 a crazy lot, but I'm gonna be doing some videos related to uh, tech, like hardware. Um, like I'm gonna end up getting, I don't know, maybe another month or two. We'll see. Probably the um, the Fold Four, Samsung Fold Four. So I'll probably make a video related to that, test it out, kind of give my my input compared to the other ones, because I actually have used the other Fold devices, like the Fold One. And the Fold 3. So, you know, just, again, I mean, I, I enjoy tech. I'm a tech, I'm, again, I, I'm a software guy by all means, but I do enjoy tech. Have a lot of hardware as well. So I'm going to be making some videos related to that. And those will probably be more quicker videos. They're not going to be as long as my programming videos, because I know some of them are kind of long. Those will be a little more quicker, maybe just a few minutes at most. You know, kind of going over some of the, um, you know, uh, the unboxing and some of the, my feedback on using it and all of that kind of stuff. So, I think I'm going to start incorporating that as well, little bit by little bit. Um, but yeah, man, that's, um, again, got a busy weekend for sure, man. Busy weekend. Um, but it's always good, man. I like, I do enjoy making the video that I make that I, I'll be making. I've been getting more ideas cause I do get feedback from viewers. Um, I have had viewers book time with me as well. You know, they, you know, where I meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so as I help them out, sometimes they give me ideas of a, like, Hey man, like maybe you can make a video related to this or this. So. I, I do have a list of a lot of different videos to make, but of course the challenge is I only can make so many, um, you know, time is limited, you know, it's, I'm pretty much, I'm a one, one man show right now, but hopefully guys, hopefully with time as the channel grows, things, all of that happens. Uh, the plan is that I want to, 
my vision is to have a small team where we would um, do a lot of this testing that like the request that we get will be able to test it out and then we can make videos related to that we could push out more videos and be able to you know help out more people and that's that's my long-term vision my learn my long-term uh plan what i want to do but i know to really scale that um uh, it can't be a one-man show either right um so hopefully over time and as the channel grows then be able to have some people help out with that and you know once i'm at a point where financially the channel making some money so i could actually pay as well right people to um to be part of the team to kind of help out with all of the testing and all that kind of stuff that we got to do when we get requests because that's what i do today whenever i get a request of something even if it's something that i know already I still got to test it out i got to test it out put the code together uh do all of that first and once i do all of that first then i make the video and then the video sometime could be you know 40 minutes long an hour long and then of course after that i got to have to edit the video that could be another 40 minutes to an hour long then i'm gonna make the thumbnail and then i have to publish the video and you know so it takes time right just for one video but the plan is as um as the channel grows be able to hopefully have people that you know to kind of help out with that so then we'll be able to speed up the process as well of pushing out more videos related again over content context that the viewers want as well so again got it got to take baby steps man it's going to take some time but i think um i think we'll get there so all right guys so today man it's only going to be you know about an hour long stream you know um like always guys i have fun man i always have fun in these streams and um let me try to think next friday so next friday i'm gonna be having my early twitch stream that i do early in the mornings because that's where i do some giveaways and then I sh i'll be on at night at 9 p.m like the way i am tonight so again guys you, if you, there's anything you want to discuss in the live stream you want to uh you have any problems with your code you want me to review your code whatever it is uh email me let me know if it's something that you want to discuss i could look into it you know spend a few minutes before the live stream kind of look into to what your request is and kind of be a little bit more better prepared so we, you know we when we do review or discuss about it maybe i could have something to show you right or something to uh to better you know go over but either way guys uh man y'all take care have a good weekend peace